Hi everyone and welcome back to The Journey. As you can see today, we're going to be talking about OB, in particular, adolescent pregnancy. Now, the major decision when it comes to adolescents is pretty much having the decision to tell their parents, right? And there's many reasons why they don't want to tell their parents. And it can be because of anger, grief, disappointment, right? Ridicule, any, any, any reason, okay? Um, also, many teenagers are afraid they postpone their prenatal care, and it only happens within uh, four to six months, sometimes even as long as until the parents find out, all right? Um, adolescent pregnancy, the main, main thing I want you guys to remember is they are considered emancipated minor. And with that said, it's pretty much they have the right and the responsibility to make decisions for themselves as far as their pregnancy goes, okay? And they can sit in on their own care uh, without their parents being there because of the care of their baby all right so in this situation they are the ones who have total control of the decision that they want to have made done for their them and their baby okay also with that said a major thing is your confidentiality and with that you cannot and i repeat again and i put it in red you cannot tell the parents what is going on without the mother's permission all right so even though they are adolescents and they're under the age of 17 remember when it comes to pediatrics and things like that the parents automatically gets involved in this situation the parents don't automatically get involved so you have to watch what you say to the parents and make sure that you have permission from the adolescent pregnant um person beforehand okay so confidentiality is key. You may get your questions based on confidentiality. I know definitely you're gonna get questions about the whole emancipated mind, so which is why I put those two things in red, so that way you guys know for a fact um, what you're dealing with when you have a, uh, a person who is a teenager or underage and is pregnant, all right? Also, do not prejudge or have your preconceived or misjudgment about the parents or the teenagers, because you may say, you know, um, you know, great parenting skills, right? How did they become pregnant? You know, or how did you not know that your your child was pregnant? You know, and sometimes it's so much easier to put blame on the parents, right? But if that parent is a single mother or single father, or whoever the case, um, whoever is dealing with that with that child, right, the guardian or so, and they're working constantly, 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 two or three jobs or whatever the case may be, they may not always pick up on those signs to say, hey, your mood swings has changed, you know, are you, are you know, um, do you need your um, pads and, you know, feminine products and things like that. They're not picking up on those things, okay? And it can happen to, you know, anyone, any one of us, okay? And also, any preconceived ideas about the child, because, again, it could have been rape, it could have been, you know, um, something that could have uh, occurred, right? Whether it's within the family, outside the family, um, a boyfriend or, you know, older male, whatever the case may be, you don't know their situation. So again, you want to keep those ideas to yourself and then I express them, okay? And the main reason why I say that, because the next important thing is developing a trusting relationship, okay? And you want to develop a trusting relationship because these, these teenagers, okay, um, they're not at the mindset where they know that, okay, I need to provide care for my baby and, you know, the nutrients and, you know, all of the attention that this child can possibly need, right? Because their whole thing at their age is just more about getting caught, um, thinking about what their friends are thinking about them, right? And pretty much school. Nothing major outside of that. So first impression is going to count and it is going to be very, very important because First impression is everything. If they don't feel like they have a good um, environment or they feel like something went wrong, they're not going to continue to come back. And your whole thing is you want them to come back because you want the, the best possible care for that baby. Okay? And at that mindset, in, at their age, they may not understand or grasp that. They just think that, oh, you know what, this nurse is, is judging me or, you know, she's just another person who has something else to say. And they just, you know, like, Say, so, you know what, I don't want to, to come in contact with that, so I'm just not going to go. And not totally think that, you know what, I need to care for my baby. These are the people who can care for my baby. Let me still go regardless of what they think. Okay, so their, their mindset is not always there. So first impression is everything. And again, with, with these uh, pregnant mothers, they are a high-risk pregnancy just because of their whole anatomy makeup. Okay, so you definitely want to press the issue of, you know, that first impression because you want them to come back. Okay, you want them to continue care. So to continue on with 
adolescent pregnancy, right? The adolescent may confine in the healthcare worker because of that first impression, right? That trusting relationship. And they may be able to be the ones who confide in you more than they do their parents. So you want to make sure that you're a good influence to them as far as the care that they will be for, towards their, their baby or their newborn, right? So the nurses now become a person who can help guide them in, within this OB journey. And with that said, you know, um, teaching them a proper eating habits and the importance of a healthy um, eating, right? Also, if they are taking drugs, because at this time, this stage of life, right, they're experimental, they're very curious, wanting to try different things, right? They fall under peer pressure. So they may already have some type of substance abuse as far as uh, marijuana or um, cocaine or those sort of things, right? And you just want to make sure that, you know, they are, you give them the help that they need, um, that you give them sensation packets, right? If they are smoking, if they are drinking, right? So this is where, as nurses, we can play a big role in their lives because they may be the ones who um, confide in you, right? Or you confide in them. So, again, self-esteem, okay? So you want to look out for those self-esteem issues, right? Because that could have been the reason why they even had sex in the first place, right? They wanted that attention, they're not getting it at home, and, you know, they feel like, you know, they, 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 they're not of value, and only someone else can give them value, and they found themselves in this predicament. So you want to watch out for those things, um, because they may also try to lose weight, right? They're not understanding that, hey, it's important that you um, gain some type of weight because you do have to feed for another human being, right? So you want to make sure, or they may try to lose weight because they're trying to hide their pregnancy from their parents. So again, you want to educate them that proper nutrition, you know, having a, a, a good state of mind, and being clean as far as any substance abuse is very, very important throughout this OB journey, all right? Also, you want to make sure that they know their options, okay? Um, and again, their options, it can be a, a abortion, it can be adoption, or them actually parenting and having this, this child, okay? So again, when it comes to the option, you kind of want to keep your personal beliefs out of the decision making, because they may ask you, hey, what do you think, you know? And you can say, you know, I'm, I'm not in the situation to, you know, tell you what to do. That decision can ultimately only be made by you, you know? Because you don't want to influence them in any type of way as far as their decision making, okay? You want them to solely um, have that decision made for themselves so that way they do not regret the decision that they have made, okay? They can't point the fingers and say, well, this health care provider was the one who persuaded me to, you know, go this route or that route. So you just want to, you know, put that back on them to let them know, hey, this is ultimately your decision. I cannot make this decision for you, but whatever it is that you decide to do, we'll go ahead and move forward with that decision, okay? So, again, personal beliefs, you know, it can be a very tricky because some people may not believe in abortion and things like that. And this is where, you know, you kind of have to keep the professionalism still there, even um, in situations that you don't always agree in. Okay? You still want to treat that patient with respect and still have a positive attitude, right? Because, again, all of that helps with this trusting relationship, okay? Um, also, you want to educate them about prenatal business, okay? So again, because they are considered emancipated minors, and again, with the emancipated minor, you want to, it varies from state to state, so you want to make sure that you go over that um, law to see exactly who are considered emancipated minors. I know some states say you have to be 16 and pregnant, others, it's as young as 12 to 13 and being pregnant, okay? So again, um, it varies from state to state, so you just kind of want to look up and see what's the policy for your state and follow um, that policy. But again, most of them are considered emancipated minors, so they are responsible for their prenatal visits, you know, and if they have a supportive um, system where they have the parents are involved and keeping up uh, up to date with those prenatal visits, then great. But if they're on their own dealing with this, then you want to educate them about the prenatal visits. Also, teaching about safe sex because they may think the worst has happened to them. They're already pregnant. What's the point of ha um, having a condom or using a condom, right? Let's just go ahead and do it because I'm already pregnant, right? And they kind of forget, hey, but there are STDs out there, right? You have chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV, right? That can turn into AIDS. All of these different STDs that, like, hey, just because, you, you know, you're pregnant, that doesn't mean that's the worst um, that has happened. You still want to protect yourself and, you know, um, provide information about safe sex, okay? And also substance abuse, because again, some of these 
teenagers probably already uh, experienced themselves with um, substance abuse. So you want to let them know, you know, the damage that it can cause to the fetus, and you know, try to have them if, if they need a rehab facility, if they need, you know, any of those pamphlets that those information is being provided to them. Okay, that's the main main thing when it comes to um, dealing with uh, adolescent um, pregnancy. It's pretty much those those issues. Right, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about the risk factors. So with risk factors, one of the main thing is your preterm labor. And it can be for many reasons. It can be the fact of poor nutrition, um, poor prenatal visits, right? Not being able to, you know, monitor and check up on the baby and things like that. So you may have a preterm labor. All right. Also, sexual pelvic disposition, which is also known as CPD. And that's pretty much when the mother's anatomy is not fully developed, so the baby's head is bigger than the mother's pelvis, okay? Which makes it harder for the baby to come down the vaginal canal, okay? Also, you have preeclampsia, which happens because of stress that the pregnancy puts on the cardiac system. It can also be because of iron deficiency anemia, which happens because of poor nutrition or malnutrition that the mother is getting, all right? And also a low birth uh, weight, because again, these, these teenagers, they're trying to lose weight, so they don't appear to be as pregnant, all right? That either whether they're trying to hide it or they have self-esteem issues. So again, you have something you want to be aware of, and you want to kind of help boost their self-esteem, okay? Be there as nurses to, you know, give them the confidence that they need to, you know, have the strength to carry throughout this pregnancy if that's their decision making, okay? But you also just want to, you know, um, pay attention to that. Also, your social risk, okay? So our social risk, as you can see, we have an increased risk for almost all of these things, right? And they have an increased risk of dropping out of school right out of high school and that's one of the things that you know is a concern because you know education is key in you know having a better life or a better lifestyle right the more knowledge you know the more um, better decisions you're able to make also a risk of becoming a single parent is increased um, the need for government assistance increase as well as domestic violence okay so I put it here in asterisk, so that is very, very important for us to know as nurses to nurture and educate them, you know, about the situation and refer them to the services that they may need, okay? So again, you may think, why do I have to nurture this, this type of patient, you know, that's not in my job curriculum? Well, that is, that's where we have the art of nursing, and the art of nursing is that nurturing side, that compassionate side, the sympathy side, right? So again, you want to have a trusting relationship, and it only comes when you are able to kind of uh, nurture them in a way where um, they need those 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 uh, assistance, okay? As far as self-esteem, you know, um, education on making better decisions, things like that. So again, those are the main important things to know about adolescent pregnancy. So that is it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, please go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Again, if you have not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And also please feel free to go ahead and check out the description box where you can see all the added information. And again, thank you for coming on this journey. See you on the next one.